Hi there, my name's Matt York and I'm a llama farmer. My name is Matt and I farm llamas here in the valley of Reed Willem in Pembrokeshire, Wales. I originally hail from the realm of Swansea which is about an hour east from here. We moved down here about five years ago um, after travelling across the island for work. After uh, many many years of working in offices doing IT work uh, I started losing sight in one of my eyes had um, some terrible head pains. Uh, I was basically incapacitated in bed for about a month, uh, basically because of the pain. I'd never experienced pain anything like it. <laughs> Eventually got about half my sight back in this eye. Um, naturally short-sighted anyway in this one, which is why I tend to wear prescription sunglasses quite a lot ever since I lost my sight. Um, very sensitive to light, so um, I tend to, um, to hide away as much as I can, like a Morlock. So anyway, cut a long story short, to my other half of Alexandria, she said, well, why don't we move back to Wales? It'll be so much more relaxing for you. And I've never stopped since. It's non-stop farm, as anyone who works on a farm will know. Um, it's every day, 24 seven. There's always something, some drama every morning with some animal. We, we went llama trekking um, ourselves years and years ago when we lived in England and found it really relaxing. So um, we always thought one day when we retire, maybe it'd be nice to get some llamas. You know, maybe we'll be able to afford a bit of land by then. Uh, but this uh, into my eye just brought the entire thing forward. I had all these tests from the doctors. Um, they said it was a condition linked closely with multiple sclerosis. The actual condition is called um, optic neuritis. They said there's no evidence yet. Had all these brain scans, no evidence of, of uh, multiple sclerosis yet, but uh, no guarantees for the future. So we thought, all right, let's just go do what we want to do while we can in case the worst happens.
we moved back to Wales, A, because A, it's cheap, um, B, we've got family here, and C, it's gorgeous. Uh, we spent, uh, I don't know, a month or two looking for, for houses. When we moved down, we saw about 40 houses. Um, the house we saw actually bought, one of the last ones, the last one we saw on the last day of our house search. Otherwise, we'd have ended up in Mid Wales, actually, instead of uh, down here in West Wales. It just came on the market that morning, I think, and um, the photos weren't great. Had a bit of land with it, though, so we thought, right, let's go in there. Let's go and have a look, and it just ticked so many of our boxes. So we just thought, that's the one for us. So down we moved, llamas turned up a couple of weeks later. So we, um, we run um, a llama trekking business down here. We take the, the public out for walks around the valley with the llamas, they get to walk their own llama. We also have people come to stay on the farm. We've got a, uh, a log cabin, the Llama Lodge, where people stay. And uh, the, the llamas look in through the windows at them. The llamas are right outside. It's got a nice little uh, log burner in there. Uh, so the feedback from that's been really great. And every year the business has gotten bigger and bigger. Hadn't planned to, uh, to start the llama trekking um, when we first moved down here for at least a year. We thought we'd let the llamas settle in and ourselves settle in. I set up a Twitter account for them just to, to reserve the name, really. Our, our company is called Pembrokeshire Llamas. We did think of a number of different names when we moved down here. Um, we thought about calling them after our farm, which is Glenreed Willem. But we thought nobody's going to be able to pronounce that. Um, a lot of our customers come from England and they, they get confused as never it is. Some of the llamas have got Welsh names and they, they struggle. So we thought, let's keep things simple, keep it geographical, nice and easy to remember, so Pembrokeshire Llamas it was. So anyway, um, I set up a, a Twitter account for the llamas, Pembrokeshire Llamas, and the next thing I know I've got a blogger messaging me saying, can I write a blog about your llamas? So I thought, well, I better have a website. So I set up a website for them, and the next thing you know, you've got people messaging me asking them to come and walk some llamas, so it just all spiralled from there, really. Um, and we've never stopped since, it's been trial by fire. I'd never run a business before, uh, never, never run a farm before. Um, and taking it one day at a time and it's been absolute madness every day uh, I think things might be settling down I'm not sure we had our first son three years ago three and a half years ago so trying to look after 50 plus animals run a business look after a child bring up a child and have some kind of semblance of a normal life um, it's interesting but um, I wouldn't have it any other way the name of our farm is Glanreed Willem which means on the banks of Willem's Ford in Welsh so we keep llamas, pigs, chickens, geese, lots of feral cats, um, parrot, tortoise, guinea pigs, uh, sometimes a hedgehog if we have any poorly hedgehogs in. The loft is full of bats and um, one of the chimneys is full of honeybees. When Wales went into lockdown earlier this year, back in March, um, because of coronavirus, um, we uh, for the first time in a while had to start going out for our shopping because usually we um, we get deliveries um, straight to the door because we're lazy and can't we don't like leaving the valley really. Um, going back to civilization is a terrible thing, so um, we started asking our neighbours if they wanted um, us to pick anything up. I mean, it's a bit of a funny one because uh, everyone obviously is, is quite independent. They don't like. Um, they don't relying on people, but we just thought it, it would have been a nice thing to do to ask some of our neighbours um, whether you know they wanted anything picking up, and uh, we'd take a list down to the supermarket and pick it up for them. We, we started um, delivering by llama because um, our business was closed down at the time, we couldn't do any llama treks. We just thought, right, let's put the food on the llamas. Um, they're pack animals, they're designed to, to carry things, that's what we've done for thousands of years. Um, they were the, uh, the predominant animal in South America, the Incas used them for transporting all sorts, so they can carry 25% of their body weight, uh, so a bit of food is nothing to them really. So next thing I know, um, I've got a BBC journalist um, joining me up asking if they can use the footage on the BBC website. I think that was over a weekend, so that started going viral, I think it had like 5 million views or something ridiculous. Um, I woke up on the Monday morning afterwards. I uh, had all these missed calls from journalists all across the world and my inbox was just full of journalists all asking if they could use our footage or have an interview or meet the llamas etc etc. I spent uh, the next month essentially just doing interviews or speaking to journalists or replying to emails from various news corporations. Uh, we ended up featuring on uh, The One Show in the UK um, this morning with Eamon and Ruth. Coast and country, all around Britain, BBC News obviously, ITV News. Um, 
Channel 4 News if you're interested. This is a very serious show for serious people. CBS, Fox, NBC, all of the American news channels, uh, Canada, all across Europe, Australia, Malaysia, India, probably other countries that I, I'm not even aware of. The Australian coverage is good. I remember they had a, a detailed discussion about Max's rear end and how large it was. We had people from all across the world message us. I always remember there was a, um, a chap from France who um, emailed me and said he'd grown up in Pembrokeshire and was very surprised to see his local village featuring on the, the French national news. So that was, that was really unexpected, just how much everyone um, seemed to latch on to that llama delivery story at the time. Um, we, we'd done it initially just to, just to be helpful and, and be good neighbours, essentially. Um, but I think it was the only good news story at the time, so uh, pretty much every journalist in the world was desperate to have a good news story because all it was was coronavirus, coronavirus, coronavirus. Yeah, it was, it was just nice spreading a bit of joy. So essentially that's why I've started doing these little films um, ever since we moved down here. Um, and started the farm, people have said to me, you should do a YouTube channel, uh, people will be interested in your lifestyle. But I prefer to be behind the scenes, to be honest. Um, but since I've featured all over the world on national television, I guess now it doesn't really matter. Um, it seems to make people happy, people seem to be interested, so um, I figure why not do it myself. Um, one thing I noticed when we were going out on all these other TV programs, the footage they'd use it wasn't always great, you know, they'd, they'd have a really weird angle of a llama or have a llama not doing something particularly attractive or or nice and I think why have they used that? So this will hopefully give me the opportunity to to show people that the best parts of being a llama farmer and the worst parts um, but not the the boring parts that uh, some of the TV programs seem to, to pick up on. Uh, so that's why I'm doing it really and hopefully as I say people seem to find it interesting it's different I suppose to me it just feels so normal being down here in the valley it's, it's easy to forget sometimes just how far away from reality we are which is nice for me and it's quite depressing when you have to venture out into it sometimes and see how the so-called real world works This is Zazu, he's our greedy llama. Albi, he's the naughty llama. This is Tyler, he's the boss farmer. This is Merdin, he's the super chilled out llama in his own little world. And this is Max, he's the delivery llama, the right diva, probably one of the most famous llamas in the world. This is Dylan. He's our spotty llama. This is Yen, he's our eldest llama. This is Hendrix, he's a very chilled out dude. This is Thelonious, he's our Argentine llama, very rare. And this is Noah, he's our baby llama, he turned one back in August. And he's a Surrey llama, so in about three or four years, his fur is going to be down to his feet. He's going to be like Dougal from the Magic Round of that. I hope you've enjoyed watching the llamas. I'll upload another video at some point. I don't know when, there's going to be no rhyme or reason to it. Uh, essentially when I have a bit of spare time. If you want to get a bit more hands on with the llamas, you can always visit us. Have a look at our website, www.llamas.wales. You can come and walk one of our llamas. You can come and stay on the farm with the llamas right outside your window. Thanks for watching and see you soon.